Welcome to episode 289 featuring DJ Fresh. Yeah. And today we are sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped? What do they do? Uh, they're the best men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Uh-huh. Manscaped just launched in South Africa with their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Yes, you heard that right. The 4.0. Is it in here? Yeah, it's this one. This baby right here. Oh. Check it out, man. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% for all the chillers out there. All you got to do is use the code MACG at manscaped.com. I actually used it the other day because I was growing a bush down there. <laughs> <laughs> for real? Yeah, man. I should use dope. it too. I call my crotch the White House because it's got a bush. <laughs> I need it as well. <laughs> yeah, I know you need it, dog. Uh, it's got an upgraded trimmer, which includes a multifunction on and off switch that can engage a travel clock. It also gives you the ab- ability to turn uh, the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. That's this light here. Yeah, I see the white one, right? Yeah. Oh, 4000K, so cool. Papa. Oh. We're messing around. Did I mention it's got wireless charging? The new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which can help battery length last longer. Ah. It doesn't help your 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 mendingo oh yeah yeah it doesn't help with the length but it helps with the one yeah but if i use it then i'll stop doing the wire because you said it's wireless right they're charging it (laughs) (laughs) right But anyway, so gents, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, you've been doing it wrong. No person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. That's the worst when that happens. Has that ever happened to you? When I'm giving head, yeah. Hey, cheers. Uh, it's time to get your own ball hair and body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice, smooth boys. Like I said, get 20% off with the code MACG at manscaped.com. If you're a chiller, you'd be nuts not to take advantage ah. of this offer. <laughs> Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Thank you, balls. They're not served on a dirty. Are the allegations true, though? So, we did a statement when this girl started uh, talking all the shit she was saying that these allegations, in fact, there's no truth to them, Mm. but, you know, there's the system. She must go open charges if she feels a crime was committed. Yeah. And she went and did that. But just categorically and I repeat, the thing is, there's, I can't say too much because mm. this is still going to court. Mm. You know what it's I mean? Going. No, it's still going to court. Yeah, there's still a civil uh, suit. Sure. The thing is, we can only get to the bottom of this in court. Mm. Otherwise, it will always be people's opinions. But and, and, and unfortunately, on social media, everyone is a lawyer mm. when there's a legal issue. Uh, when there's a medical issue, everyone is a doctor. Uh, when there's vaccination, <laughs> everyone is a vaccinologist. You know but when Meg G wants to comment on politics, I ah, stick to podcasting. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? But so the only way this thing can be seen to its logical end is in court. Yeah. And I'll tell you why I insist on that. Because if this thing doesn't go to its logical end, then you're leaving a Pandora's box where people can accuse people wrongly, get away with it, and ruin people's lives. Yeah. Nobody should be allowed to get away with that. Yeah. Nobody. Here, here's my thing, right? Yeah. When the allegations came about, right? Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm a DJ as well. Uh, obviously not as prominent as you. Mm. Uh, when I was at Y, you know... I mean, no one is as prominent as me. So don't have- <laughs> <laughs> so 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 having been a dj having been at why you know i i had like when i saw your allegations i was like mm. shit this could have happened to anyone mm. because we were smashing groupies mm. you know by the you car were? park yeah Jeez. yeah by the bathroom yeah we're rocking girls you know and so the condom range was actually not for sale it was a stock for you guys <laughs> wow 
so, so when those allegations came about, yeah. I could see, okay, cool, this is possible. You understand? Mm, mm. Based on how the game is and whatever. No, no, fairly, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And you must remember, back in those days, there was no social media. Mm. You know, it's a different time now, mm, mm. where like you know what we were doing back then now seems mm. and is deemed to be wrong, mm, whatever, mm, right? Mm, mm, mm. My thing is with you. I think if it was just one girl, mm. you could be like, ah, mm. maybe it's a disgruntled ex mm. Mm. or it's just someone out to get you. Mm. But a lot of women mm. came out saying the same thing. Mm. And but, with the smoke, there's fire. But did any of them actually stand up and say, it's me here? Because unfortunately with social media, it's easy for you to hide behind the Monica and say, Mac G did this. Mm. Do I even know you're a woman? Are you maybe not a guy who figures, fuck, Mac G's fucking up the media right now and we need to bring him down? I am for, if a crime has been committed, then let the law take its course. Mm. It's easy to fucking sit behind a computer and accuse people of shit. Yeah. It's fucking easy. So you've never smashed any groupies in the car park? Which toilet? car park? Which no, car I'm park? just saying, whatever, whichever car park. After a gig, nothing. And like, I, when I, I, you didn't deem it as, as rape, but, you know, the, the person might have. One, I need a bed. <laughs> no, no, but, but seriously, Vele, I think it could be anyone. And unfortunately, we're in an industry where a lot of people consume a lot of alcohol and a lot of shit happens. Unfortunately, this event never happened. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Hence, like, I, I insist. In fact, I was sad when the NPA actually... Okay, I was in two emotions when the NPA said they're not going to prosecute. I was happy because you don't really want to go through a rape trial. Nobody wants to go through a rape trial. But if there isn't a trial, then it's in the air for people to decide what they want to believe. Mm. And for me, therein lies the problem. Because if the NPA say there's no reasonable prospect of a conviction, it doesn't mean you didn't do it. Mm. It just means they can't prove it. And for me, that's a problem. Hence, we went the route we are going, that we need to prove that this person is talking rubbish. That's why it has yeah, to but, go to but, the courts. But, but big dog, we in SA, man. Mm. You're a very influential person. Mm. You got all the money in the world. I don't have all the money in the world. But in, in fact, in fact, you know, I was laughing the other day about how people talk about we're using our influence for this. You know, if I had half the influence people think I do, fuck, dude. You guys would see shit. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. It's simple. The, you know, there is a system and we will use the system to prove but that But the system is innocent. flawed. You, you can pay a, 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 a journalist not to write a story about you. You can pay and, a judge not to prosecute you. Have, no, no. You're no. a judge, dude, dog. Dude, yeah. dude. Even Zuma couldn't do that. Uh, dude, that's the higher level, chief. I wish I had one judge on my speed dial. Just one. I don't even have a judge on my speed dial. You know what I mean? So you're telling me with all fact, the connections you've amassed mm, in your 30-year career, yeah. you couldn't do anything? I wouldn't... Speak to someone who can speak to but someone. But to do what, though? To do what? To squash everything. But, in fact, let me tell you. So, when this shit started, you know we had about four or five people call us saying they are cops, they can make this thing go away, yeah. they just need 20,000. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to pay you to make something go away that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Mm. Because then that would be me admitting that we've done something wrong. Yeah, I've done nothing wrong. Something. I've got nothing to hide. And in fact, if it goes to court, um, there's more than enough evidence to show you that I was never in Pretoria with Temba at any of those places in 2011 in July. Have you ever forcefully forced yourself on a woman? No. Ever? No. no, no not without asking, uh, strangle me daddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> But then we're playing a game then. <laughs> yeah. You know? But now you guys opened a case and the NPA refused to prosecute. Yeah. Uh, even though the, in the docket, I mean, she had said that she was with a friend mm. on that fateful night. Mm. And that friend said she was not with her. Mm. And she said she was a virgin when the allegation happened. Mm. And there was another guy in that very same docket who said... 
I've smashed this girl prior to that. She was not a virgin. So already there is proof of dishonesty. How do you feel now when the NPA says we're not, when you guys open the case and the NPA says we're not going to prosecute her? You know, I think it's unfortunate that even with all that you've mentioned, and in fact, there's a whole lot more in the docket that shows that there's a lot of lies happening here. And I think it doesn't help that now you have all these influential people backing you, saying, go open the case. These people must go to jail. You know what I mean? So, so I've actually been through so many emotions. At some stage, I was very angry. I was like, you know, what have I done to whom that I must go through all of this shit? You know what I mean? Um, at some stage, I even felt sorry for her that what have you been through that you think it's okay to do that? And not only do that, but perpetuate it. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I felt like a ton of emotions over the last eight, nine months. But, you know, if the NPA feel they can't, you know, try her for perjury, there's still a civil case. It must still go to court. And at court, the truth will come out. My thing is, I hear what you say. You keep oh. going to the law and stuff, right? Mm. right? But let's be honest, dog. Mm. I mean, I've spoken to um, someone who used to work for you. Mm. I won't disclose their name because mm. obviously, you know. Mm. Um, and they said you came onto them at a club mm. and you were very rapey. Mm. And you said that, listen, if you don't give me bums, mm. you're going to lose your show and stuff like that. A show? Yeah. What show? No, I can't disclose. But I'm saying, we're like, you but, can't sit there and, and be like, I've never in 30 been in, years. I've never been in control of a show, though. No, but I'm saying, you can't sit there and, mm. and say in 30 years, you've been a saint, you've done nothing wrong. Because it's you not just what? one person saying this. No, no, like I'm saying to you, though, it's easy for people to hide and throw allegations for whatever reason. It's easy. And I'm saying, again, if the law has been broken, then do what you need to do. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, apart from that, what else do we do then? Like, what else can we do? If you feel you've been wronged in the eyes of the law, then let the law take its Have course. you been a saint for the past 30 years? As in, have I forced myself on someone? Mm, whatever you want to, yeah. No, I have not forced myself on anybody. Mm. Like, nicks, nicks, nicks. Mm. Like have I said, you, not unless they asked. Have you ever been, like, drunk and maybe got in with someone and they might perceive that as rape and you were of the impression that it was consensual? I'd say no. I'd say no. No. I find that no. hard to believe. As a DJ. Why, have you done that? No, no, no. I've done a DJ. <laughs> No, no, no. I've, I've, I've smashed girls that, in light of the Me Too movement, mm. that if they were to come out and say I raped, mm. you know, they, I didn't rape, mm. but they would have grounds to say that mm. because we were drunk mm. and we just smashed, you know mm. what I mean? Mm. But not like, I was like... Like I said, I've not had unconsensual sex with anyone. Have I had drunk sex? Yes, I have had drunk sex. Mm. But I've never had unconsensual sex. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, man. So now where we at with the whole case? Well, we wait for the NPA to give us a nolly prosecute certificate. Yeah. So the certificate basically says to them, says to us, we're not gonna try her. Mm. Here's a certificate. Mm. Now that certificate gives us an option if we want to pursue a private prosecution. Mm. So if our fans would like to make donations, we'll maybe pursue a private prosecution. And, and, and how's that changed, like, your, 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 your life, the allegations, like, uh, you know, your reputation? You know, unfortunately, I think we spend so much time thinking social media is life that we forget that there's a whole world out there that either are not on social media or actually don't give a fuck about social media. Mm. So, so initially, going out, you were kind of not sure because there's all this shit happening. Because you were prosecuted by social media. Exactly, mm. as, 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 as happens. So you're like, you initially almost doubt yourself. In fact, let me, let me explain something to you. You know, despite the fact that we had told our friends and family that this thing never happened, 
we still went and did polygraph tests, just out of our own, just out to show that this thing never happened. Yes, a lot of people say polygraph tests can be beaten. I don't give a fuck if that's what you feel. But we went to that extent. Wow to show that one, we don't know this person, we've never met this person, we're never in Pretoria with this person, even the best friend says that, we never, that, that thing never happened. You know what I mean? But I remember the first gig I did after all of that. Yes, yeah. And I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. But you realize when you go out into the world, I'm sure it's the same with you, mm. where there are people who hate you. Yeah, yeah. There are people who want you cancelled, there are people who want this podcast fucking burnt. 100%. Of, of but when you go out there, all you get is hugs. 100%. You never love. meet I've any never of those trolls. I've never met a person. It's love. Yeah. I've never met any of those trolls. Mm. In fact, I've been off radio this whole year, pretty much. I did radio for one week this year. Mm. This Heritage Day, last week, I did more gigs than I've done any Heritage Day wow. without radio. Wow. You know what I mean? And I think part of that is build your brand to an extent that even when you're not on radio, people want to be associated with it. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And I mean, I've worked fucking damn hard for this brand. Mm. And, I, and I'm not going to sit and watch someone piss all over it that I've never met. Mm. So, yeah. And let's talk about um, surviving DJ Fresh. It's mm. not coming up, ne? No. Okay. No. I'm just making sure. We don't want that, eh? Because they're going to come the back only, to this interview. The only way it would come out is if it was about maybe you felt like, oh, this guy's appetite matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the only time that would come out. Because I heard there was a new station mm. that was going to publish a docky mm. with all the victims or mm. perceived victims, mm. but that got canned mm. last minute. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I heard something like that. Heard something like I, that. I heard, yeah, like a, it was a, something come a TV show. Yeah. But it yeah. got docked last minute. Yeah. You never heard about that? No. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, so a girl you've never ever met comes out, accuses you of something. Do you think she woke up and decided, let me accuse Fresh and Euphonic? Or there is a, a, a third party influence that said, you, there's fresh, there's euphonic, attack, accuse them of this. Honestly, I don't know what the initial motive was, but I What's think, uh, no, I'm good. I don't know what the initial motive was, but I suspect when all of a sudden there's these powerful women behind me, I can run with this. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know. And the thing is, there's a lot of things I can't say because they must be, they must come out in court. Yeah. For instance. We so, I, so I can't say to you, Saul came to me and said, uh, here is this. Yeah. Um, because then it's just hearsay. And unless I can give you a name, I can't talk about it. You know what I mean? But in court, it will all come out. And, and, and your wife? How did you meet your wife? Gee, she she worked. She was doing news at uh, Y. Yeah. And oh, she was at Y. Yeah, she was doing news on my show. Oh wow! Yeah. And then we decided to be the news. <laughs> so, so so yeah. Headline. <laughs> so do, do, do you hit her up or she comes? No, in? it just grew, man. You yeah. know, when you work together. Sometimes you just gravitate towards one another. But you saw her first on TV and I think you told someone that I yeah. want that woman. No, no, she was doing the joint on SABC One. It was a Carol Bauer production. In fact, I think it was Carol Bauer's first ever production back in 96, I think. Yeah. So it was her and Tim Howard. It was like a talk show for youth on SABC One and I was in my uh, bachelor flat uh, on Empire Road with Sammy T. Oh, wow. yeah. And I told Sammy that... Oh, he stayed in Park Town? Yeah, on Empire Road. <laughs> Very close. He's like at 30 seconds away from Park Town Road. His yeah, mom's house, corner. literally. I was caught. You know the Brenters Clinic? Yes! I he's was right opposite Brenters. He's opposite. opposite. And you know those big, big flats? Yes! I was behind those big, big wow. flats. Wow! Yeah. Why didn't you call me, dog? <laughs> you were a child. <laughs> Like, what am I going to say? <laughs> like, yo, man, I, I hear you need a nappy chain. <laughs> I hear you're full of shit. I, I promise I'm not, I'm not a pedo, but I heard you're full of shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it 
it true that I heard I heard your nappy's full. I don't know if it's you took a poo because <laughs> you're a vendor man. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you guys are in an open relationship? No, man. There's no open relationship. Yeah. That's some, that's some bullshit. Yeah, that's been But, but you know everyone in the industry while. says that, right? For a while. For a while. No, man. There's some bullshit. There's no open relationship. Yeah? There, there's no open relationship. Yeah? Mm. Are you... Uh, what's it called? Is Tembu? Is it called as Tembu? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the sick one is seeking one. Are you Do they offering seek one? one? <laughs> <laughs> Do they seek one? <laughs> if you have one to offer, we can talk. You don't have more than one wife? Uh, no. Just one? That, that's uh, my other friends do, but not me. Yeah? Mm. And kids, how many kids? But they shan't be named though. No, it's Tembu or it's Temba. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> how, how many kids you got? Uh, five. Five? Yeah. Same, same and, 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 and counting <laughs> that, that you know of, that I know of. <laughs> and please, you know, make yourself known, man. You can't have killed children and hide them, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with with the, with the same same mother. Um, three with the same mother. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what what does your wife say with all these allegations? Because she's a public figure as well, you know. You know, we discussed it. I mean, we discussed it from the minute it happened. When the Uina and thing happened, we discussed it and. And yeah, you know, it's, it's and, what and, it is. And your kids? What did they say? The thing is, it's important to alert, especially when your kids are at an internet age, mm. to alert them of what is happening and put everything into context. So whatever they read is contextualized. You know, otherwise you're leaving them to basically lap up whatever everybody's saying. Mm. So I think it's important to, to talk to your kids yeah. about everything that's happening in your life that's of public interest. Yeah. Uh, you know, otherwise you're fucked. Which one of your kids is, uh, looks like they're going to take after you? I think, I think all of them, eh? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, Tato was taller than me when he was 16. <laughs> <laughs> no, when he was 16, he was already taller than me. Whoa. <laughs> And you know he's dabbling in rap, a bit of music production. Now he started modeling. Wow! Uh, he's one of the models for a Legends Barbershop. Is it? So I decided to be a, a weird black parent and give him a gap year. So that <laughs> go find yourself, decide what you want to do, and then if you want to go to varsity next year, you can go to varsity. But if you don't want to go to varsity next year, you must move out and go find a job because yeah. I'm not going to f- uh, feed you. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, and then my daughter who's 13 is going to. To art school next year. Wow. The six-year-old son is going to grade one, but wow. he he could be anything. Cause yeah, he's because he's fucking brilliant at everything. Yeah. So, so yeah. Let's talk about DJing, man. You've mm. been all over the world. How's it like performing like in Ibiza, London, all those places? Because you guys went before social media, ne? Yeah, way before social media. Yeah. And in fact, I was looking at some of the pictures we took in Spain when I went with Tira. Wow. The camera was so pop that pixelated. <laughs> So I can't even fucking post them. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the, the digital camera setting was, was bumped. Yeah, yeah. So we could take more pictures. Yeah. Now they're fucking pixelated. Yeah. So when 9-11 happened, as those planes went into those two buildings, myself and Tira were landing in Spain. Oh. We spent 10 days there together. We'd, we'd both won the DJ knockouts, Men yeah. of DJ Knockout on yeah, YFM. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We spent 10 days in Spain. It was fucking incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And Myself and Tira, had, we, we didn't know each other. And then he won Men of DJ Knockout. I was one of the judges when he won. Then we traveled together to Spain. So we flew business class. By the time we got to Spain, we were fucking best friends. Were you amazed by uh, Coffee's success? Because when I, when I see him, I'm like, this is what DJ Fresh should have been, you know? I was amazed, but I wasn't surprised. Mm. But... I'll tell you, to tell you the honest truth, my love for radio got in the way of yeah, many other things yeah. that I could have done. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the fact that it happened to Coffee, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think if anybody deserves the success Coffee has, it's Coffee himself. Because hmm. he's fucking worked hard, he's fucking built, yeah. and, and he's where he's at right now. Do you remember the first time you met him? Coffee. Fuck. Where did I meet Black Coffee the first time? Because I remember he used to open up for Christos. No, no, yeah, no, Vele, when he was part of Shana. Yeah. But I think the first time I met him, met him, was at Leisure Lakes, Mahuta's spring picnic in Midrand, 2003 or four. Yeah. I think it's the first time I met Black Coffee. Can I tell you a funny story? So, yeah. so I'm fresh out of Venda, eh? get to Joburg. 
uh, Fresh and Oskira doing Zambezi Sundays. So I speak to Bobster. Bobster's like, yeah, come through, come rock. What, what? So how do you meet with Bobster? How did I meet Bobster, actually? From why? Because uh, okay. he was producing Oskido's show mm. and I'd just mm. chill around. You know, I always used to like chill around mm. Mm. and with why, like you can mm. chill. Even mm. if you're not doing the show, you can just go there during mm. the day. Mm. So that's how I met Bobster. So uh, uh, um, Bobster tells me I'm going to Zambezi. Bobster tells me you're rocking after DJ Fresh. I've never met Fresh, bro. First time ever. And then I go to Fresh. I'm like, hey, Fresh, what time are you finishing? <laughs> Bob's, uh, Fresh goes to Bob. He's like, hey, my man, who's this young one? Please tell him you can't fucking do this shit. Bobster comes to me. He's like, Meg, you don't do that, my man. This is the big dog. <laughs> <laughs> he will tell you when to play. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know, <laughs> dog. Because he told me 10. I'm rocking at 10, my man. <laughs> no, you play when I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite compilation, man. Of mine or yeah, of yours. generally? Of yours, of yours. I think it has to be between Fresh House Flavor 1 and 4. four. I, think, I, think, I think those two almost made us realize at the time. Because, you know, the assumption was that deep house music is a black thing. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden I was getting booked at gigs in Pretoria... And I assumed it would be, you know, black kids, but it was white kids. Hmm. That's when I realized that, oh shit, this shit is actually fucking crossing over. Mm. You know, I often tell a story of, uh, I was at Cresta Mall and I met her, I'm walking, and some white girl sees me, she walks towards me, and she cr starts crying. So I'm panicking. Wow. And I'm panicking, I'm like, fuck, I'm a big black guy, there's a white girl crying in front of me. <laughs> Rape case! Or if I'm in the US, 911. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then she starts telling me about how Fresh House Flavor 4 wow. was all she listened to on repeat in, in, in rehab. rehab. And that had Whoa. she not had the disc, she doesn't know that she would have made it through rehab. Wow. You see, that's Whoa. when I started realizing that, Jeez. again, like I say, we don't realize the impact we have on people's lives. Mm. Or Very. we take it for granted. Mm. Very true. You know, you know what I mean? That's when I realized that, oh shit, this shit is actually bigger than just Kasi. Because mm. we thought we we're just taking records that are big or Kasi mm. and we'll put them out there. Mm. So, so yeah, man. And you know, till this day, people think Summer Days is still your track. It's <laughs> important. I was telling Lulo the other day that, you know, maybe you must just take pure surprise that take Summer Days. <laughs> Uh, we just put our names on them. Yeah. But we might as well. Yeah, yeah. You know? My man, I still get emails from guys who's like, so what are you thinking, my man, when you made Summer Days? Yeah. Like, fuck. What do you think about the, 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 the DJing landscape right now? I think, like, the, the, the art is gone, man. Like, people don't give a fuck no more, man. You know what? I think because guys are chasing gigs, guys are chasing money, guys are chasing fame, they're not necessarily passionate about the art side of DJ. The craft. The craft, the, the understanding your role in the bigger picture of an event, for instance. Mm. I mean, if you're booked for an event, I always want to know the entire lineup. Mm. So I know, okay, this person plays this, this person plays that. So if I play this, I'm giving the crowd something different. Or I'm not repeating anything someone else might have played. Because for me, DJing is not just playing music. It's knowing the role you play mm. in the bigger picture. Because yeah. once you know your role in the bigger picture, you know when not to play the anthems. Mm. You know when not to play the big hits. Mm. If you're an opening DJ, fucking play an opening set. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of DJs don't understand that. Mm. There's almost zero DJ etiquette. There's zero passion. Just everyone can DJ. Yeah. I remember DJ Monday booked me a bad night. I'm playing 78. I rocked all the hits. You see. <laughs> and he's like, my man, what must we play at 12? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Fresh House Flavor 4. We, we did a launch party. It was 2000. It was August 2000. Do a launch party. Got legs up. The guy before me played every record on Fresh House Flavor 4. <laughs> it's a Fresh House Flavor 4 launch. <laughs> He thought he was paying homage. He's paying homage to the legend. But also, because me, 
I'm scared of no DJ. Yeah. I'll, I will play before, after any DJ and I'll still fucking rock the crowd. So I just went to my record box, yeah. found songs and just rebuilt. So by the time I got to Fresh House Flavor 4 again, the lips, like forgotten. No, no, but also literally the roof was fucking sweating. Yeah. There was water fucking dripping off the roof. I've never forgotten the party. Wow. And, and wow, I think as a DJ, man. you also need to be that ready for anything might happen. Mm. Don't pre-plan your set such that the minute someone plays a Prince KB set song or a Cubs or a small cool, song, yeah. your set is fucked. Mm. And, and there's so much music in the world. People are paying top rand to watch us perform. Mm. And we want to repeat music. Mm. want to play the same 20 songs. Mm. No, man, no. And everybody's playing the same shit right playing now. Playing the same 20 songs. Yeah. Dude, I will arrive at any event and I will make sure I stand out by playing something else. Yeah. Or making sh- In fact, I always insist on finding out generally what did the guy, three, four guys before me play? Because I don't want to repeat anything. Mm. People have paid fucking a lot of money mm. not to hear us playing the same songs the whole fucking night. Top five DJs? Fuck. Yo. Kent, I know, is in there. Kent, wow. I know, definitely. Yeah. Euphonic, not so much. I'm not so sure. Maybe Temba. <laughs> Yo, that's difficult, eh? <laughs> I don't know if I can give you a top five, All right. but I can tell you guys I have a lot of respect for. Okay. Uh, Black Coffee, a lot of respect for Black Coffee. Vinny and Christos. Oof. I've been a fan of Vinny and Christos since 92, 93, 94. You know if there's one guy I can't play after, it's mm. Christos. Yeah. I can play after anyone but yeah. Christos. My man, Christos will rock any crowd Yo. with deep tunes yeah. you've never heard. And the crowd is going crazy. And he's never changed. And he's been like that since 93. I met him in 93 consistent since 93. You know what I mean? Kent, a lot of respect for Kent. Uh, Euphonic or Temba, depending on which one. (laughs) And and I think track selection aside, they also give a fuck when it comes to technicality. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm a sucker for a DJ who gives a damn about transitions, Mm. timing, and just make the music talk and make, you know what I mean? You know, so for me, it's it's everything. Yeah. It's everything. The DJs will play a song that has a fucking massive break. But as the song breaks, the previous song is still playing in the background. Mm. And nigga, you have to break. Come on. <laughs> and the crowd are waiting for the break. Yeah. Now they're still like... <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So, so I think in terms of the art of DJing, very few people respect it or understand it anymore. Anyone can fucking DJ... Uh, fuck, you have actresses DJing now. My grandmother can DJ and she passed away 20 years ago. That's how fucking bad it is. <laughs> How's it like meeting the David Gators, the Martin Garrix? Are those guys dicks or like chill no, You know what? A lot of these DJs actually love Africa. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Wow. And they love Africa. They love South Africa. So generally, they respect us. They like us. Yeah. And But also, I find it difficult to be starstruck. Mm. Like, I don't get starstruck easily. For yeah. real? For real? Nah. So even on coffee, I remember there's a story where uh, Ronaldo, the real mm. actual Ronaldo, yeah, wanted to, what? yeah, Brazilian Ronaldo, mm. wanted to meet Black Coffee, mm. and Coffee was with you guys, and same story with the P. Diddy party, and mm. he was like, nah, meet the whole squad. You had the P. Diddy party? No, like, first yeah. at, the, at the Diddy party. Yeah, P. Diddy, yeah. Black Coffee put them on, him, no, Temba, no, I mean, everybody. I mean, Diddy, at the, the last Sunday of the Miami conference, or of Ultra Miami, Sunday morning at five, Diddy starts his party. So when all the clubs are wrapping up, five in the morning, people go to Star Island and party at Diddy's place. You know, it was nice meeting him. But I was, what? I find it difficult to be starstruck, eh? Even if you meet Howard Stern today. I find it difficult to be starstruck. But he's not wow. a fan of Howard Stern. Lord, you know, you know, you know, no, no. No, no, I mean, Howard Stern is a radio giant. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm not gonna flipping knock out one quickly because. <laughs> You, you know what I mean? I know he will. <laughs> In fact, I'm sure if Mac G found Howard Stern and Fadjo shagging, he joined them. <laughs> Where, Where's uh, the Rock the Girls condom? Where, where, where's your Vaseline? Next, you know, I'm next. Guys. 
Tell me about O ship, dog. Did you ever go to any other O ships? O ships. Oh yeah, yeah. I went to the 2015 one. How's O ship, man? It looked like a fuck face, bro. Wow. Uh, firstly, when you work with me or you work for me, when we do all ship, you get a cabin. Wow. You know what I mean? So that's just part of the perks, yeah, basically. I know that. So, yeah. so Solo was part of that shit until he decided to just abandon us at five. Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah. Until I decided to jump ship. <laughs> <laughs> but that was dope, ne? Nigga, do you know how much I had to fight to get you to just do a minute feature on Metro? Dude, okay, so when, when Fresh then moved, right, they fucked up, dismantled his show, and he had the new show, and he, he calls me up, and he's like, yo, listen, they say they don't have a budget, I want you as... Uh, this is the gambling days. No, oh, after. after. This is after. So, like, after. so I was like, I'll pay him out of my own pocket. What? Yes, when he was coming. No, nigga, me, if I believe in you, I'll pay out of my own pocket. If management wow. answers, we don't have budget, I'm like, don't worry. I have budget. What? This is the second year <laughs> at Metro. Second year after they changed the show. And it's like, I want you on my show. They say they don't have budget. I was like, listen, I'll do the show for free. You know what I mean? It's like, cool. And then they're like, no, we don't want Saul. Someone up there was like, fuck this kid. He fucked up once. We don't fucking want him in this building. And he's like, I'm going to pay him out of my own pocket. They said, no, fuck him. Then he said, okay, he'll come. He'll do a one minute a feature one minute segment they did not want me on nigga i had to fight to get solo on and it still didn't work no no eventually did it eventually did. eventually, eventually. Yeah. yeah i remember we did the show on the first day yeah. of the show mm. of the revamped show yeah. with uh yeah. second day they're like we told you we don't want this guy on <laughs> tell him to fuck out of here and I was off for like three, four days. Then I was back on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the local government elections are coming up. Mm -hmm. Any chance of you getting into politics? You know, if I went into politics, it would probably be at local government level. Because I think that's where you can make a difference. Because local government level is where you can fix roads, make sure water is running. Mm. That's where you can actually deliver. The real stuff. You're not the really sitting. Stuff. Yeah, it's, it's. So for me, if I did politics, it would be at that level. Mm. But unfortunately, because at local government level, it's also where uh, guys eat. Yes. That's probably why guys get assassinated. Mm. Because maybe you get in the way of the eating. Mm. Yeah. So when I get into politics, I don't know. Mm. But I don't know if you know Shili, Shili Mings. Mm -mm. You know Shili Mings, but you know Shili. Uban Lo. Mfumu, Mama Yvonne's son. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know Shili, the party animal Shili. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, 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 going, he's, he's, he's going to local government elections, dog. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I will vote for Shili. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. We need young people yeah. in politics. Yeah. We need young ideas. We need fresh ideas. We need young minds. To the Zani Zuma, would you vote for him? Only because he said loot responsibly, I don't know if I would. <laughs> because, we, we sh because we shouldn't be looting at all. Yeah. At all. You know what I mean? You know, he's a nice guy. I mean, I know him. Um, I did business with his friends oh, wow. when I was sponsored by um, 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 Affliction. Oh, so he's a nice guy. Huh? Okay. No, no, he's a nice guy. I mean, we, we chat and, and whatever else. But also, I don't know that he's ready right now. Yeah. We're gonna play a game, it's called One Must Go, ne? Fuck. <laughs> the radio go. edition. Fuck. Are you ready, my nigga? Let's go. Uh, Dinewa Ranaka versus LKG, One Must Go. What are they doing? Uh, the radio. Oh. <laughs> what are they doing? This is a bit obvious, but yeah. I think Dinewa has always been radio. Yeah. Dinewa has always been radio. I think she kicks ass on radio. Um, I think often she doesn't get enough of her flowers. Yeah. Um, so Dinewa must stay, dog. I was shocked they didn't give her drive time. Dinewa fucking kicks ass, guys. Mm. Dinewa fucking kicks ass. Yeah. So I think if Metro were not obsessed with pairing people up, she would have actually shown her colors long ago. 100%. Because unfortunately, often when you're co-hosting, mm. you don't get an opportunity to, to fucking... Mm. Yeah. Go in it. Yeah. Chili and Fat Joe. One must go. They've both been fired before, so they're both gone. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta choose one. 
you got to choose one. Gotta choose then I'm going to ask what I want to ask. I think Fetcho. Must go. He must stay. Oh, must oh. No, no, Chilia must go simply because, in terms of consistency, Fetcho has always been consistent. Mm. You knew he was going to deliver a good show, mm. you knew he was going to get fired. Yeah, yeah. Chili, you're not too yeah. sure. So, so, unfortunately, I think Chili got too caught up in the trappings of the industry that often he'd lose sight of the ball. And unfortunately, it's never about the after party. Mm. It's never about the after party. Mm. And a lot of people in our industry forget that. They make it about the after party, it's supposed to, you need to perform at the concert, mm. not at the after party. Oof. You know what I mean? Oof. But a lot at of our guys, event. exactly. But a lot the of reason. our guys get it fucking twisted. Mm. And, and, and for, you know, may his soul rest in peace. I think that was Chile's greatest uh, downfall. When did the rivalry begin? Jeez, I can't even remember. For real. I think I was doing Selim Atunzi some interview. I think I just started at five in the afternoons or something. I can't remember. He was doing. It was doing afternoons at Y with Dineo. I can't remember. I can't remember if I'd said something on Selim Atunzi, something like. Uh, come at me or whatever, whatever. I think it was Street Journal. No, no, it was Selma Tunzi. Selma Tunzi. Wow. Oh, so it was an interview. No, no, it was an interview I was with Scoop. Scoop was still the uh, presenter then. No, Selma Tunzi. It was Street Journal. Street like Journal. I said, it was yes, Street yes, Journal. Yes. Scoop, I remember what that What am I thinking, Selma Tunzi? You've been around street... for a while, man. It was Street while. Journal. Yeah, Street Journal. Yes, so yeah. Mm. Oh. So that's what happened. And then he took it personally, and then he went on with it. But then I was, I'd moved on. Yeah. So, so yeah. Were you mad at the interview I did with him? I wasn't mad at the interview. I thought it was unfortunate that, but then I realized that, but that's you. So, for instance, you laugh at anything negative said about another person. Mm. You know what I mean? So I thought, <laughs> so, 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 so I thought it was unfortunate, but I wasn't mad about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, but you were. And, right. and in fact, in fact, <laughs> I love at anything negative. <laughs> <laughs> but he does. No, he does. <laughs> you know what I mean? So initially, I thought it was unfortunate. Then I realized that no, but that's what Mac G does. Mm, so yeah. don't take it personally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if I had an issue with it, I wouldn't be here right now. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But also, I wasn't come, gonna come on to your show with nothing to talk about. Mm. I repeat, don't just do an interview for the sake of doing an interview. But I felt a weird vibe at, uh, cause I'd known you for a very long time. Mm, I mean, mm, like, you know, mm. I used to come visit you uh, when you were doing your, your show at 5FM. Yes, you did. Just remember. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I have good luck with rashes, eh? <laughs> Nino, Nino's a fucking rash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but at Mpo Pop's show, yeah. I felt a very weird vibe for the first time ever. You were there. No, man. Was this after the Chile I'm interview? Yes. No, no, that was, no, wasn't that after the, Interview with a woman I might or might not have dated. Oh no no no! It was no no no. That was after. No. It was after the chili him. So I met him there with his wife. I'm like, hey, big dog. He was acting funny, and then we just happened to sit next to each other. Oh, oh man, that's <laughs> that true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, then the next morning, Mexi uh, sends me a, yeah. a, a message. Oh, yeah. Man, are we cool? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is he on about? <laughs> <laughs> You're bloating <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. I still haven't responded. <laughs> No, because I was like, I answered him last night. Like, why must I answer him again? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. No, nah, dude, I'm cool with you, dude. No, one love. You? Yeah, yeah. Dude, like I said, yeah. dude, I was a fan when you weren't fucking crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When my kid was watching TV, I was like, that kid, that kid is good. Wow. That fucking kid is good. All right, Timo Touch, Robert Morrell, one must go. Fuck. Mm hmm. Your partners. Mm. Partners in what, my man? In fire. If you love being fired, Fire FM loves you. So what? So why are you here? <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> oh, why are we all here? <laughs> it's where we are. In fact, oh. in fact, I think the only guys who haven't been fired are behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. You guys are making me laugh so hard. I'm fucking sweating. <laughs> Fuck. Um. I think Tibo Touch must go Oof. 
purely based on the experience Marawa brings to the game. Yeah, man. Um, for instance, you know, a lot of people don't know this, for instance. I mean, Marawa at 2000 brought in so many listeners and so much revenue. <laughs> it's like, it's fucking insane. It's insane. His pull, mm. just as a media brand, as a, as, a, as a sports flipping... What, 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 I'm looking for a word, man. English is gone now. I mean, now use your English data then. <laughs> As a sport authority. Robert is fucking solid. Yeah. You know what I mean? But taking nothing away from touch. Because what I love about touch is the fact that touch was unorthodox from day one. Mm. Even when he did uh, Rhyme and Reason. Mm. He was always almost the outsider. They just worked his way in through the back door mm. before he knew it was doing the fucking drive show. Mm. You know what I mean? So I think in terms of work ethic, touch can stay, but in terms of solid broadcaster with experience, but how I can stay. Mm. So I hope that answers your question. Fuck fucking man. hell, man. Don't ask the question again. <laughs> and Fire Fem, how's it going? He told us yesterday that you guys got 150 million now? Yeah. From IDC. We're getting 150 million from IDC and funding. Who's he? Ta uh, touch. Tabba touch. I don't know what you're talking about. My thing is, who's going to fire who on that show, on that channel? Yeah, because everybody's saying the egos. <laughs> Too many big egos in one room. Inja, what Inja? <laughs> <laughs> if one go, we all go. <laughs> you know what, though? I mean, uh, what I love about uh, Zbu, Touch, Marawa, mm. not only dope broadcasters, but, you know, the dope dudes. Mm. You know what I mean? And people think we are egotistical, mm. maybe because we are sure of who we are or what we are worth or the value we bring. Mm. But, but we're actually cool with one another. Mm. Just it's a pity I was not aware we have 150 million rand. Yeah, yeah. Maybe touches used our names to get <laughs> 150 million rand. You know, that's how he rolls. But oh, maybe a shy shy. There's, there's, there's no 150 million. Right? Yeah. Uh, Anelo Unati. Ooh, ah, it's obvious though. One must go. I think when it comes to radio, mm. I think Anelo kicks fucking ass. Yeah. I think, I think. Her breakfast show is one of the hottest in the country, if not beyond the country. Yeah. yeah. Because I listen to radio around the globe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you listen to Carl and Jackie O? Uh, no. Oh, okay. For instance, I listen to Kiss FM, yeah. and then I'll go to Capital in the UK, yeah. Yeah. then I'll breakfast go to Radio Club. One. And the breakfast shows compared to Anna's breakfast show, chalk and cheese, bro. Wow. So when it comes to broadcasting and just fucking kicking ass, I think Anele can stay. Yeah. But generally, I think Onati is a nicer person. Mm. Ooh, well, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah. I didn't rate Anele until I started working with them. I'm like, actually, she's good. No, no, she, she, she's sharp. She's, she's, she's radio through and through. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Whether you hate her or love her, you can't fuck with her radio. Was there a chance of you and Onati ever working together on a show? No. No, they never. Thomas got... married her and took all of that away. <laughs> Uh, last one. But it's weird. You know, myself and Nunati met just when I started at Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was doing a gig at Rhodes, and she was in the organizing committee. She was doing first year. And I remember she came and introduced herself. She was this uh, shy little girl. Wow. Um, she gave me her number. Mm. And I remember I called on the dorm number or the res uh, yeah. And they called her, and there was like a whole lot of commotion because the person who answered recognized my voice from Studio Mix. And we just became friends. And we've just been friends since. Wow. So, so yeah. And then Thomas is like, friends for what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, lastly, oh, this was a tough one. So Penduka and Tato, from Tato to Tato. Jesus, bro. Come on. That's unfair. That is unfair. I mean, yeah. they did like four, five years of radio. We did like two. Four minutes. 
unfair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's unfair, bro. Yeah. That's unfair. Look, if you don't choose me, I understand. <laughs> I'm good, I do what I do, and I understand. You know it's a trap when the person says that. <laughs> <laughs> when the other one is in the room. Fuck. Nah, man, look, I understand, bro. <laughs> you guys, you and Tato signed, came to my high school. We won a, 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 an invitation, uh, a visit. Yes. You know, by the two of In the school quiz. Yes, exactly. And you guys signed my book. I mean, come on. What the fuck, <laughs> That is a stupid oh, yeah. thing. So was that a rapper a in high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Tato and Fresh signed my book of rhymes. Yeah. So how dare you pit me against Which one must go? Oh. So where is this book? It's around, actually. Do you still rap? Or oh, you realize I that? Still, I still... It's a rap. <laughs> oh, 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 they're so bad. They went from rhymes to crimes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the cat sat on the match is hardly a rhyme dog so <laughs> <laughs> so which one was good fuck man I'll never forget when you guys uh, Mendoza that, that, that clip of Mendoza Tata to Tata, what did he say, Mandoza? No, it was uh, Jabupule. Hey, Jabupule, yeah. what did he say? Yeah, this is Jabupule, listening to Tato to Tato. <laughs> <laughs> and then Proverb is like, no, Tato and Tato. <laughs> and then it's like, Tato to Tato. <laughs> the ecstasy is still in the system. <laughs> I fell on a twin, at the time. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> twin. On and off the field. On and off the field. <laughs> Which one must go, man? Which one must go? Nah, man. I understand. Yo. Nah, dog. It's not that difficult. Come on. <laughs> no, Tato's a god. No, no. Bro. It's difficult because both of y'all kick fucking ass. Mm. And I shared a billboard with Tato, but also you didn't fit. So. <laughs> <laughs> With no, the gowns. No, no, we had billboards, sir. Yes. No, we had fucking billboards. Yeah, and gowns, yeah. 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 I'm gonna go with Tato, I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because Tato was the show producer, he was co host, and no, actually, Tato did a lot behind the scenes. Mm. Where soldiers showed up and pissed people off. No, no, sorry, soldiers showed up and pissed white people off. <laughs> First white people. Yo, 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 you, you, you know what? You know my, no. my my biggest dream is yeah for the three of us to do a show together, mm. man. Because I watch sometimes these guys know like I watch so well he's working. Yes. And I'm in awe, bro. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> like this guy's good. <laughs> Because people think it's scripted, yeah. but he's literally like, um, no, no, he's so, so sharp. No, no, Sol is a fucking genius. You know, Sol did Traffic on my show on Five. And we play a song, whatever, we do a link, then play the traffic sting. And Sol is, does the traffic report, the traffic report, one minute, two minutes. Then I realize there's no piece of paper in front of him. It was all in here. For real? Damn, dog. It was all in here. What? I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Saul is a fucking genius, guys. You guys don't understand. That's why I fought to have Saul on my show at Metro. Yeah. And in fact, when he started with you, I was trying to get him onto Oskido show. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? That's how much yes. I believe in this kid. Yeah, um, man. Thank you, Shout man. out to you, man. Thank you, thank Shout you, man. We're glad he didn't go to Oskido. We're glad to have you, Saul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could have done both. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No competition. Oskido's uh, family. In a nutshell, man, what do you want to be remembered as? Oh, no Tando Tabete, no nothing. Nah. Okay. Hey, Mara, Tando Tabete. What? Who can you put her up against? Who else is there? Is she, still mad, is she, is she still mad at you? No, no, no. We, uh, she smoked a peace pipe. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. <laughs> a piece of pie. <laughs> No, she hit me up and she was like, yo, let's smoke this peace pipe. I'm like, right, cool. Oh, man. for real? Yeah, How come want, you didn't tell us that? She didn't want no smoke, dog. She was starting a new gig there at 947. She didn't want no smoke. Oh, okay. How are you? Are you good with her? Because I remember her tweeting stuff when the whole allegations happened. You know what? I thought we were good. 
until I realized that, oh, okay, she's with them Bogotos there. Mm. And, and for me, the, the sad thing was we've been good yeah. for over 10 years. Whoa, and, 10 years. And she's got my number. Yeah. She can call me and find out what the fuck is going on here. Yeah, yeah. Then I can break it down. Then she can decide what she mm. wants to do. She Mix. She just no, opened her Twitter and no, decided. No, just, just still, you know who called me when mm, I was, when I was mm, uh, fired? Mm, Love. Mm. Take a guess who called me. Take a guess. Bob Star? Eh? Bob Star. Nah, nah, Bob Star was with him every day. As in at why? Caesar Lomo. So when you're fired away, nobody called you? No one. <coughs> Caesar Lomo was the only person. Wow. That guy though. You know what I mean? The number of conversations I've had. I mean, me and Caesar will talk for an hour. Yeah. Because Caesar is that guy. He's that guy, bro. So even He's if. He's that guy. Vele, you had fucked up. Caesar will still call you to check on you. Yes. Caesar is that guy. And advise you or. Caesar. And he won't tweet, just spoke to Mac G, mm. he's doing fine. Mm. No. A real G? Yeah. No, no, no. Caesar is that guy. He's so a, so shout out, Caesar. Who called you, bro, when you were going through your, your tough times? No one, but I called Caesar. Boiti called you. Boiti helped you out. Nah, help me out when I needed help. Boiti. Every time I called him, he lied to me. I couldn't, it was fresh for some odd reason. It Every time weird. I fucking called him, he'd lie to me. For real? Yeah, I wouldn't be. Like the one person I didn't open up to and everybody was like, dude, tell fresh what the fuck is going on. I couldn't. Nigga, so and and, that and when me. I did, he, 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 he thought it's a lie. Like he, I've got a gambling problem. Mm. And he didn't believe it. Mm. The one time I did, but I couldn't for some nah, odd reason. That should hurt me because I, I was know, like, man. I can see something's wrong. Yeah. Mm, I, yeah. But every time I speak to Sol, he tells me nothing. Mm, yeah. But then I'm being told shit by management. It's not Sol is sleeping at the studio. Sol is sleeping on the couch. Now the couch is take a taking a beat. <laughs> <laughs> but I talk to Sol. Sol lies to me. Nah. So. Hey, that should hurt me, nigga. I know, because I, know, I could have helped you. Yeah. No, no, don't I, give you money to gamble. Yes. Find your help. No, no, I know. <laughs> I, I, don't know. I know. I know. I know, bro. Uh, I in know. a nutshell, man, what do you want to be remembered as, DJ Fresh? Tata I want to be remembered as the guy that gave a fuck. Because yeah. I've always given a fuck. You know what I mean? I'm very big on legacy. I'm very big on create your own economy. And your economy is the people whose lives you've affected positively in such a way that they're now making their own livings and now they're affecting other people and there's that economy. So for instance, I'll give you an example uh, about the legacy I'm talking about. And I'm part of Oskido's legacy because Oskido put me on. Oskido put everybody on. Uh, but because Oskido put me on, I felt the onus is on me to put other people on. Mm -hmm. You know, so whether it's your Kents or your Phonics, um, uh, or Cleo's or the listeners whom I've paid rent for oh. uh, the listeners I bought groceries wow. for uh, the 2000 kids I've put through varsity Bursaries. You, you, you know what I mean for me that's the legacy and for me that is um, I, I call it freshonomics that because of my positive influence on those people they now eat, some have cars, houses, oh. families, degrees, diplomas, oh. but they're living. Let me, so that's all. I want to just be remembered as a guy that gave a fuck. Let me just disturb him. I remember when we were at 5FM doing the breakfast show. It was his birthday. Two guys came through, right, to wish him a happy ah, birthday. Boys. And the one is, they were both in corporate, right? to wish him a happy birthday and they came through looking nice, dapper, dressed in suits. Those are my first ever two bursary recipients. And uh, 23 years ago, 22 years ago. We came out to meet them with Fresh and then Fresh disappeared. And we're talking to them, talking to them. And then we came back into studio and found Fresh in a corner, face wet, tearing up. For real? Yeah, well, well, yeah. No, man. One, one, one of them is a squirter, one of these guys. <laughs> he was crying, dog. Fresh, big dog, was in the corner crying. Because of when he met one of those guys, the situation and conditions he was in, to when he sees him now. You know? And he just played a role in helping that guy being who he is today. Guy was crying, fresh. 
hey, I, think, I think because a lot of the time we take our own privilege for granted. Mm. You, you know? And often we don't even admit our own privilege. Mm. But, yeah. you know, through just my bursary scheme alone, I've taken kids who had nothing. Yeah. Who were living in a, a squatter camp. I mean, there's one kid who... Dude, the only shoes he had were those traditional shoes made with tire. What are they called? I see those. In but those in batata, man. Those yes. Zulum, Zulum batatas. I see those ones. That's only, those are the only shoes he had. Those oh. sandals. Yeah. And I'd given him a best way to do a degree. But he doesn't even fucking have shoes. He didn't have money to get to. So I had to find him accommodation near Monash. So that he could fucking attend. Mm. But he's got accommodation, he doesn't have anything else. So now you have to fucking buy groceries. So it all adds up. You know what I mean? But that's shit I love doing because I believe my calling is to make a difference, mm. is to change people's lives. Mm. So radio, I believe, I was put in as a vehicle to be able to reach more people. Wow. You know what I mean? I mean, the other guy that I gave a bursary, I remember he had given his mother's number, his mother's work number, um, as a contact number. Um, I pick up the phone at YFM. At that time, I'd never show producer. You know that my show at Y for the first two years, I'd never producer. Uh -huh. I produced the show myself. I did the drop-ins myself. I, did it, I, was, I was a one-man show, literally. Mm. Anyway, so I call, and when I call, it's a pick and pay in Norwood. The manager answers. Mm. Wow. So I was like, oh, no, I'm looking for such and such a person mm. because the son is on a bursary. Mm. And they call her. So we're live on air. Yeah. And then she comes and answers the phone. And she literally just fucking burst out. My son is on a bursary. Wow. My son is going to school. In the shop, and there's obviously people there. There's been someone in the background declined. But she... <laughs> <laughs> But, and <laughs> she literally told me that, do you know that next month, my son was coming for an interview to come and work in this pick and pay. Whoa, man. And now you've changed, do you know who that is? Gigi, Malseke. Yeah. Gigi was supposed to go to that pick and pay to get a fucking job, because his mom was a cashier there. I don't know. His life did. changed. And for me, that's what Freshonomics is about. Yeah. How many lives can you change uh, and, and, and sustainably that they can change other people's lives? So, like one of those kids, uh, Spiway, that, was, that, that brought the cake. Yes, I remember. He now has his own bursary scheme. What? Oh, so he, now he's sending other kids to school. You're kidding. Oh, oh man. So for me, that's thanks, important. Thanks to Legacy you. is everything. How many lives have you touched positively and uh, hopefully forever? In fact, I was saying to Tema the other day, what's actually weird is how I know for a fact that most people going through just half of what we've been through this year would have fucking jumped in front of a train. They would have collapsed. No, no, they would have jumped in front of a train. Yeah, yeah. would have collapsed. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. like I said, but because we know the truth and we know the truth will come out, we're not going to live in fear mm. about what people think about us. Again, I use you as an example. Mm. Enough people hate you online, yeah. but you'll never meet one of them outside. Zero. But you go outside and people fucking love you. People mm. want to hug you. Mm. You know what I mean? So as much as social media has impact... Uh, I think often we give it too much credit. We do. Mm. It's a thousand people. There's 50 million of us. <coughs> yeah. You know, it takes a thousand tweets just to trend, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. No. Mm. Mm. So that's, that's all it takes. So if I'm a radio station, <coughs> I don't want the podcast and chill to pop because it's affecting my revenue. Mm. What am I going to do? Absolutely. What are you going to do, sir? <coughs> Pay a thousand people to do what? Oh, is that what's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> huh? So where to? So are you having cars following you around lately? What's going on? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not that big yet. We're not that big yet. <laughs> We're not that big yet. It's, it's not that. But I'm saying like, like shit. My bathroom window is closed, man, when I left here. Why is my bathroom window open? <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you, if you go under hashtag podcast and chill and you check all the negative comments, it's mm. bots. Mm. So you're like, who are these people? Okay, what's the... Uh, narrative mm -hmm. they're trying to push unfortunately there will always be a narrative unfortunately there'll also be people in whose interest it is 
to perpetuate that narrative. Yeah. So I think you need, you need to be careful of that. Yeah. Mm. And I think you also need to be careful of what you allow to sit in here. Because that's the difference between whether you can deal with it or whether you're going to jump in front of a train. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, um, and you know, the people that would call and check on us, I've always said one thing to them. Unfortunately, I, am, I fear nothing because the truth is on our side. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. I fear nothing because the truth is on our side. Mm. If there was no truth on our side, then maybe I'd be worried. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not worried, I'm not scared. Where to for DJ Fresh? Fire the film. What's, What's that? the future? What's that? <laughs> Spoken about Fire FM, right? I mean, you've taken pictures. Yeah, Fire FM is loading. Now you're gonna say what's Maybe that? Just all we did was take four pictures. <laughs> a picture of four black men. That's all. <laughs> Maybe it was a robot. <laughs> what's the future for DJ Fresh? Because I've had time on my hands, I've managed to do some studio time. So I have an EP dropping literally on the 1st of October. Oh, nice. Piano or piano? No, no. Like house. Uh, Afro house, Afro tech. Oh, nice. Oh. Nice, nice. In fact, as we're recording this, because it only comes out on the 1st, but it's already out on Beatport. Yeah. So this morning when we woke up on the top 100, the EP was at 36. Wow. Now when I checked, before I started recording, it was at number 12. So I suspect we'll be in the top 10 by the weekend yeah. and hopefully number one by the time we drop on the 1st of October. So, uh, so do, yeah. do you produce or you buy beats? Buy beats? Mm. Who does that? A lot of people do that. You know what I do? I don't play, but I've got an engineer that I tell, this is what I want. This is, if you have to hum a bass line, you hum a bass line. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what being a producer means. Because yeah. do you know a lot of guys who can play can't create melodies in their yeah. heads. They can't Or literally. won't have the idea that you want. They exactly. don't. They can so you're a DJ Khaled. <laughs> Another He's one. a producer. <laughs> Another one. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so for instance, sometimes you buy a loop package. Okay. And you like some of the loops and you say to an engineer, this is what I like, this is what we're going to make. Yeah. Or if you have a reference track, this is what I like, this is the direction we're going. So you can't so then, reason and make a drum pattern or food You loop. can, but it's a lot of work if you don't work on reason all the time. Oh, but if you can yeah. find someone who can fucking do it with a hand tied behind the back yeah, yeah, yeah. and you tell them what to do, why the fuck would you not do that? I and my time is money, my man. One hour of mine is a lot of money. And we've had two hours. Thank you for all the money, bro. No, but you have paid <laughs> so how much do i get when we get to a million viewers uh, you got all the money in the world fresh but at, where do you guys get this impression let that we have money eat. let us eat no but hold on where do you i genuinely want to know yeah. this impression that we have a lot of where does this come from this nigga last week we were meant to record and then he's like yo i gotta deal with one of my minds sorry man i never said that <laughs> I never said that. No, dude, you're fucking doing the shit, dude. Mm. I think you're fucking doing the shit and you must continue doing it on your terms. Because a lot of guys are going to want to jump on your bandwagon all of a sudden. And often guys who want to jump on the bandwagon also want to control the bandwagon. Mm. And I think you need to be careful of who you get those vultures. Yeah, yeah. No, no, those vultures, nigga, they'll take your shit, own your shit, and then fire you from your own shit. Yeah. Steve you know Jobs. I mean? Steve Jobs. Yeah. So it's, it's fucking yeah. important to maintain ownership and just fucking keep being unapologetic. Those that love you will stay. That those hate you must go fucking watch something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we have an obsession with spending so much time telling people how much we hate them. As supposed to, why don't you spend your time liking something else then? Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, the world is fucked up as it is. Mm. Yeah. You know, now we don't need other people who spend so much energy and time and resources trying to pull other people down. And as creatives, we spend time on the negative comments mm. too much than the positive. Like you'll get one comment mm. that's fucked up yeah. and you've got a hundred that's like mm. really, really yeah. but you focus on that. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I remember, uh, do you watch uh, Curb Enthusiasm? Not in a while, but I used to, You, yeah. you know, you know yeah. the guy? Yeah. So the guy, da David, is it Larry David? Larry mm. David. Mm. He goes to a basketball game, right? So they showed, he was in the stand and they showed a picture of him like in the screen and everybody's going crazy. Yeah. But he was sitting right next to someone and that just, that one person was like, I fucking hate this guy. This guy's a dick. Yeah. So he gets in the car with his wife. 
Everybody was screaming for him it's like uh, Larry David, whatever. But it's like to his wife. Why does that guy hate me? <laughs> <laughs> he was only focused on that guy. Yeah. And a lot of creatives in our industry like doing that. Ooh, and, and you don't need that woe is me, self-pity party. Like, fuck, man. You know, not everyone will like what you do. So give love to the ones that love and appreciate you. Mm. You know? But we want everybody to appreciate what no, we do. It's not what no, it's not we want, because we... Thing is, we try to convert those that don't like what we do. We nah, try to get them nah. to like what we do. It's impossible. Not everybody can it like is, what you do. It's, it's impossible. Your attitude oh, should oh, always right. be: I am a train, and I leave this station at this time. If you're on board, let's go. Ooh. If you're not on board, the train is leaving. Full stop. Wow. Now yeah. you want to fucking waste your time waiting for more passengers? We're, they don't give a fuck. They don't fucks with you. And it's probably full to capacity. This train. And even if it's not, take the ones who are ready to go with you. Love There's enough people out yes. there that you can make a living. But oh, we still want to have fucking uh, pity parties about... No, dude. Yeah. No, dude. Love wow. that, man. So, and and, and in fact, that's why good, I'm not bro. even worried about my career. Yeah. Because I know I've got enough of an army out there that it doesn't matter what platform I create or yes. whatever. It's going to fucking pop. You will never stop. It, it's going to fucking... I'll tell you right now that people who stop listening to radio, because I'm not on radio. And, you, and, I, and I say that confidently true. because I know that for a fact. Did true. you ever meet that guy who always used to call you Kahisho or something? No, I met him quite a few times in, yeah. in, in Valcom. Yeah. yeah, every you know, show he called you. No? Dude, it was like a rash. Oh, Kahisho, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a rash on the palm. <laughs> no. But it's all love. No, 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 no it's, all, it's all love. It's all love. But I think we need... To remember that though mm, that yeah. you have enough people who love you that you can either capitalize on it uh, you can um, turn it into something positive without having to worry about everyone else around you Oof, that's Ooh. powerful so so yeah Yo, bro. on that note we are here man podcast and chill boom Fuck. after four fun. years yeah <laughs> 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 what's happening thank you so much chillers for the continued support always remember make sure you subscribe and you like and also if you like you can become a subscriber and yeah 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 <laughs> yo what is happening shout out for your continued support on podcast and chill make sure you subscribe and like they subscribe and they like Right? <laughs> oh, that one. All right. Yo, what's happening? Shout out to. Nah, fuck. Let's go again. Uh, paint me then. Eh? To paint me. Yo, what is happening? Shout out. Thank you guys so much for the support. And always remember to subscribe and like. And you can also become a member and subscribe to Patreon and, you know, throw the, the coins a bit. All right. Peace. Love you though so much. Last one? Yeah. Yo, thank you guys so much for your fucking continued support. Please remember to subscribe, like, and do all those things. Become a member, a patron if you want to bless us a bit and, you know, throw the coins that make them dance on the podcast. Peace. Love you so much. <laughs>